Greetings. What you just saw here, the taste of what we're going to watch tonight. And as you can see, I'm in VR chat currently. A little different than how I would usually do things. But I thought I would experiment with this medium a bit. This video could easily just be a series of clips, one after another, full screen with me talking over them, but something I've come to enjoy about VR chat is the fact that it's a lot like an IRL stream, that it's IRL in a virtual world. So it's just us hanging out together, just watching creepy videos, which honestly is one of my favorite things to do in life. So this video is pre-recorded, but in the future, I want all of these to be live on my Twitch stream so we can have chat here at the same time. I might even have guests here in this virtual space. I don't know. There's a lot of places I think I could go with this. And you can maybe uh, explore VR chat worlds and do all kinds of things. But to begin, I just want to watch a series of videos that I enjoy. They all kind of follow the umbrella of um, the type of horror that feels like it could happen. To me, that is the most interesting type of spooky stuff are things that really feel real, that are kind of on the border of fiction and reality. So we're going to start with some real world scenarios. I'm going to talk about them and all that. And then they go more into fictional ones and back into some real ones towards the end. So this isn't edited. Um, I'm not going to be cutting to make everything pristine. Um, people have told me that they like my kind of long form background noise types of videos. So easier for me. So let's just see how this goes. There's going to be some down time as I get everything set up. So something to know about VR chat is that there's a lot of broken worlds out there. It took me a very long time to try to find a world that I liked the atmosphere of and that had a decent video player. This one has loads of broken features that I wish I had. I can't rewind or fast forward. If I accidentally click the play button over there, it restarts and I can't skip to where I left out. There's just so many broken things. I feel like I just need to make my own world for this kind of thing because it's so hard to find a right so bear with me as I struggle with the tech a little bit but I think it's worth it in the end so let me switch over to this view maximize the screen a little bit let me move over here and I, in the links in the description, I will put all of the videos that are shown tonight. This particular one was created by Kick Hats, and it's called Emergency Alert Message Original. So the next video that we're going to watch here is a collection of real-world emergency alert systems. Now, different countries have their own ways of describing their alert system. There's different names for them. In the US, it's called Emergency Alert System, EAS. It used to be Emergency Broadcast System, which is e EBS. So it's really cool to see how other parts of the world handle emergency situations. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how the one in the US works. A lot of people don't actually know. Me struggle with technology but here is on all right so one thing that a lot of people know and is very recognizable because of a recent meme of Siren Head is that sort of the noise you're going to hear at the beginning here, not the this one when the screen's red, but the first one when it talks about um, EIS in the United States. And it's that, that 
eh, kind of noise. And a lot of people think that that noise is just designed to get your attention. It's the fact that it gets your attention is an interesting side effect of the whole thing, but it's actually data that's being transferred. Uh, I saw some BS online about someone saying that like the sound was scientifically studied in order to like strike fear into people at a deep primal level, which was totally false. But it's actually data being transferred, kind of like a 56k modem. It's through a system called FSK, which is frequency shift keying, which is where it very rapidly fluctuates in different frequencies at such a high rate that a computer can read that and, and interpret it as numbers and letters and things like that, depending on the combination. And in the US, that whole noise at the beginning is called an EAS, or it's called a same header, which stands for like, uh, what is it? It's like, a same here, let me check real quick. It's called Pacific Area Message Encoding. And the interesting thing about that is that it gives you a lot of information in there. It's usually about um, you know, what is the alert, is the alert a test, uh, the duration for which the alert applies, what counties uh, or divisions of some kind need to be alerted to this whole thing, and then the tones that you hear at the end that sound kind of like telephone, like a chord of multiple tones, those are designed to turn on weather radios, which kind of an outdated thing in the age of cell phones, but weather radios are uh, things that people leave plugged in all the time, and they're waiting to receive that sort of signal through the air through radio. So as soon as they hear those tones, they turn on and they receive messages to tell you what kind of weather it is, and it's all just done through sound. Now, a lot of different countries use similar things. They sound different. They get your attention in different ways. So uh, let's take a look at some of these. And I will fast forward through parts of these because uh, uh, it's a 20 minute long video and there's a lot of different videos I want to get to. So let's go to the first one. Let me also move into position. Your chance to get an incredible deal on gorgeous prefinished hardwood like gun stock open. Video is not frozen. That's the noise I'm talking about. Here's Canada. Even type is tornado. For Nancy, Southern Cowards the Lake. For New Market, Georgina, Northern New York region. For Uxbridge, Beaverton, Northern Durham region. Tornado warning in effect for Nancy, Southern Cowards the Lake. New Market, Georgina, Northern New York region. Uxbridge, Beaverton, Northern Durham region. Take cover when threatening weather approaches. Please monitor for further updates to this alert. One of my favorite things about these kinds of alerts are the Texas speech that's used. I know long ago it used to be a thing where it was um, 
someone would actually come on a microphone and talk, which you'll see in some of these alerts, there is actual person there speaking live. But I think text to speech almost makes it more horrifying in a way because it is just this uh, unfeeling robot attempting to, you know, to relate to human emotions in order to deliver some in some news that nobody wants to hear. And it's even better when it's an old, outdated text to speech, in my opinion, because it ends up. Uh, repeating things in a lot of ways like I know something that happens here in Minnesota is that um, you have counties here in our state so the voice will be like there is a weather alert for Hennepin County St. Louis County Birch County Divine County it just keeps repeating like that so I think it just really adds to the whole creepiness factor very delightful to Emergency warning message has If your area is affected, take all necessary precautions and listen to any local radio, television, or cable outlet for further updates. Do not use your telephone for the duration of this emergency. I know it sounds kind of weird. It was kind of weird. Uh, and something I want to point out too is that. Oh, What's a little scary, uh, and there's a reason for it, is that a lot of this emergency alert technology is very outdated. That that last one we saw was from 2002, which is, I mean, not that long ago, but it looks like something out of like the 80s, um, with like the graphics and stuff on the screen. And a lot of this emergency technology is very old, um, like the whole thing with the U.S. with the same header and the screeching sounds and all of that. Uh, that system has been has remained that way for an extremely long amount of time and people in technology a lot of times you'd think that like you'd want to keep things as up to date as possible in order because it's safety that's at risk here but really there's cases where keeping the technology simple and to the point and not over complicating things could mean safety in the end so i guess it's kind of a balance between do you want to be able to support everything including really old computers at the risk that newer ones might not respond as well or do you want to completely eliminate older systems and just throw them all away i don't know it i think it's just a matter of like budget and like hey it works why well, try to fix it if there's no problem i don't know i'm not an expert on the issue but i just know that you'll see a lot of outdated technology here which is pretty creepy here's japan it's a very different sound compared to what it's like here in the U.S. おはようございます。6時になりました。NHK ニュース
テレビの画面は福島県いわき市の現在の様子ですカメラが左右に揺れています NHK の各放送局からの情報によりますと先ほど午前6時ごろ東北地方で揺れを感じました震源が海底ですと津波の恐れがあります海岸や川の近くからは離れてください、well, 緊急地震速報です福島県宮城県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形県山形Is another form of data transfer. I think it's radio teletype, RTTY. It's a similar thing. This time it's just two different frequencies jumping up and down rapidly to deliver data. Now, this is a video of an earthquake happening in Mexico. I think it's actually like Mexico, Mexico City.、Um, but the earthquake is happening in the studio of the, the anchor person giving the warning, which makes it、um, an extra level of creepiness. Con calma, traten de guardar la calma. Si están cerca de alguna salida, háganlo, háganlo con calma, por favor. Las personas que están. Las personas que están、eh, vamos a tratar de salirnos de aquí porque está temblando ya un poquito fuerte. Vamos a seguir aquí al aire nosotros. Sismo en la、calma. Ciudad de México. TV, y es que está moviéndose ya bastante fuerte aquí dentro del estudio de televisión. Por supuesto, seguimos, seguimos en vivo. Un fuerte sismo que se está sintiendo en estos momentos aquí en la Ciudad de México. Seguimos, seguimos al aire. Salga si puede hacerlo. Está temblando aquí en la Ciudad de México. Un fuerte sismo que se está registrando. Sí. Seguimos al aire, seguimos al aire aquí en Foro TV, seguimos transmitiendo en vivo aquí en Televisa y todas las、eh, edificaciones. Okay, so this is a little funny. This is a very old alert from 1990. I don't know if this is still what Australia uses, but it's just, this is like a used car sale commercial. You'll see what I mean. John Sluter again from the Bureau with the latest situation on Tropical Cyclone Nancy. A short time ago, she was approximately 170 kilometres northeast of Tawanton, moving in a southwesterly direction at around 50 kilometres an hour. Now, at this rate, she's expected to cross the coast between Tawanton and Cape Morton sometime after midnight, with winds expected around 150 kilometres an hour near the centre. So, a wise thing to do before you go to bed tonight check around the house to make sure nothing is loose, and of course, stay indoors. I'll be back again in one hour with another update. See you then. Here's, that a, here's yet another very different approach.
Interesting to have the English version read by a British guy at the end. Before disaster hits, you need to be prepared. You need survival item. Okay. This is uh, New Zealand. And... Uh, the emergency alert sound for New Zealand is the funniest thing I've ever heard. I think it's partially because this is a very old video clip of it, but listen to the sound that is used to designate that, you know, there's like a life, uh, like a something dangerous to your health happening in your area. A getaway kit and a plan for your family. You also need to recognize this civil defense warning sound on your radio. If a disaster occurs, you'll hear this sound on the radio, and you need to listen, because it will be followed by a civil defense message that will help you get through. For more information, visit getthrough.govt.nz. Wait a minute. They had a website, so that wasn't actually that old. Maybe that's... A all the like sci-fi noises that they use uh, in New Zealand. Cool. Oh, this is a phone alert. Speed this up. Now this one's very strange. This is, uh, if I remember correctly, it'll explain it on the screen, but I believe this is a... Actually, let me just... Let me have the text explain it. I don't remember exactly what it is. This is the wartime broadcasting service. This Okay, yeah, so this has never actually been broadcast, but this apparently is is stored in case it needs to be used. So it's a little chilling to hear... Um, that they have messages prepared for this kind of thing, but I guess it, but that they do? If it was played for real, it'd be hard to believe that what you're listening to is actually happening. Country has been attacked with nuclear weapons. Communications have been severely disrupted, and the number of casualties and the extent of the damage are not yet known. We shall bring you further information as soon as possible. Meanwhile, stay tuned to this wavelength Stay calm, and stay in your own house. Remember, there's nothing to be gained by trying to get away. By leaving your homes, you could be exposing yourselves to greater danger. 
If you leave, you may find yourselves without food, without water, without accommodation, and without protection. We shall be on the air every hour on the hour. Stay tuned to this wavelength, but switch your radios off now to save your batteries. That is the end of this broadcast. Chilling. Meet the MP. Returns Tuesday, the 26th of February at 9.30 p.m. on 5. You can also watch other episodes of Meet the MP on Toggle. system sounded in support of total defense day this is sounded when the population is to be alerted to an important broadcast on local radio stations there are two other signals of the public warning system namely the alarm and all clear signals when you hear the alarm signal move to a shelter immediately when the threat is over and you can oh. leave the shelter this message is brought to you by singapore civil defense force interesting they actually have different sirens for different signals here follows a government announcement the national emergency coordination group has issued the following notices a red weather alert is in force for the entire country for monday 16th of october Hurricane force winds are expected in every county. All schools, colleges, and childcare facilities will be closed. People are advised to stay at home. No unnecessary travel or other outdoor activities should be undertaken. People should secure any garden furniture. Hmm. That was Ireland. And this is obviously one happening outdoors. We skip ahead a little. Well, that was the end of the first video. I'm, I'm going to put in uh, a second one. This one, there's only a couple that I remember being interesting in here, so I'm going to skip around a lot for this. Oh no, VR chat. Oh, well, here's one of the joys of VR chat. Oh, you're just seeing a solid white screen. Okay, just a second. Just a minute. See, this is a lot like if I was actually on a live stream because it would uh oh you're just seeing a freeze frame of the last of the placeholder image all right let me gotta turn some lights off
and back. So VR chat likes to disconnect people. It's a lot of fun. I don't know what this placeholder text is. It looks like Arabic or something, but it's always there. All right. Let me back to this. Back in. Nemanja. Go back to Russian alerts. Here we go. Oh. Alright. I think everything's back to how it was. ЧС России в Ульяновской области. Проводится техническая проверка системы централизованного оповещения населения области по гражданской обороне. Напоминаем, звучание сирен означает подачу сигнала «Внимание всем», по которому необходимо включить радиотрансляционный приемник «Радио России» Oh, this one is really freaky. This is broadcast over the whole city. Exactly sure what this is. It's from 2019. People reacting to some kind of emergency, I guess. Now 
this this is actually pretty chilling to watch is because this is uh from the huge fires that happened last year in Australia like devastating fires so it's uh you the announcer is going to talk about like all the affected cities and talk about an evacuation of just tremendous amounts of people and you can see the fires in the back and like all these uh, poor animals that are hopefully going to be evacuated I mean, there's no like disturbing things that are shown here it's just kind of like the feeling of like what it must have been like to be here um, and you could hear the woman pronounce all of the like crazy names of cities in Australia and they're just like the most Australian sounding cities I've ever heard so let's take a look so there's that sound Bingo Manji, Dinner Plain, False Creek, Flower Bag, Glen Valley, Flower Lake Bag, Hinamanji, Hotham Heights, Mayford, Nels, Omeo, Omeo Valley, Shanahan, Shannon Vale, Swiss Creek, Tongio, Wentworth, Wongangara. Bushfire activity has dramatically increased to the northwest of Anglers Rest. The bushfire is heading towards Omeo, Anglers Rest, Dinner Plain, and Kabungra. The fire is currently impacting the Omeo Township. This fire is threatening homes and lives. Severe thunderstorms are likely to produce damaging, locally destructive winds in Dargo, Omeo and surrounding communities Saturday afternoon. Be aware of very dangerous and unpredictable road conditions. You should move indoors to stay safe unless you need to evacuate because of the fire. Trees are likely to fall on buildings and across roads. The Hotham Road is closed at the boom gates at Harrietville. This emergency warning replaces the message published at 12.34pm today, the 4th of January. You are in danger and need to act immediately to survive. The safest option is to take shelter indoors immediately. It is too late to leave. You should move indoors. Oof. Protect yourself by wearing long sleeves and trousers made from pure cotton or wool. Wear leather boots. Bring your pets inside. Close all exterior doors, windows and vents and turn off cooling systems. You must take shelter before the fire arrives. The extreme heat is likely to kill you well before the flames reach you. Oh. Shelter in a room that has two exits, such as a door or window, including one directly to the outside. It is important to be able to see outside so you know what is happening with the fire. If your home catches on fire and the conditions inside become unbearable, you need to get out and go to an area that has already been burnt. It may still be too hot to remain outside, so you'll need to seek shelter in another structure or last resort option. There is a place of assembly yeah. at Omeo Recreation Reserve. Only travel to this assembly if it is safe to do so. If you cannot get indoors, last resort options include shelter in the middle of a large open area like a ploughed paddock, football oval or sporting reserve. Get into a large body of water like a dam, lake, river, the ocean or in-ground pool. Try to protect yourself from the fire's heat. Damn, that was intense. Okay. <laughs> um, this French one is just so funny for the wrong reasons. It, it's like, maybe it's a typical thing, but it's, uh, it's like so overproduced. As you can see, it has like this action music that comes in and this guy's voice sounds like a villain out of like a James Bond movie that's reading this like serious alert that's happening. I don't know what he's saying, but it's just the whole presentation of this one is just, is a little weird. Lorsque vous entendrez cette sirène et que vous verrez ce message, cela signifiera que le ministère de la justice a lancé le dispositif d'urgence pour retrouver un enfant enlevé. Alerte enlèvement. Une description de l'enfant enlevé, sa photo, la date, l'heure et le lieu de l'enlèvement vous seront communiqués, ainsi que des informations sur le suspect. N'agissez pas seul. Composez le numéro de téléphone qui vous sera communiqué si et seulement si vous disposez d'informations. Alerte enlèvement et le dispositif d'urgence pour retrouver un enfant enlevé. Votre mobilisation est essentielle. La survie d'un enfant en dépend. Uh. Uh, 
nakaporma na lahat dito sa command center o command post ng MMDRMC. At uh, ito, nagka-countdown na sila bago magsimula ang uh, Metro Y-Shake 3. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ito po si MMDA Chairman Francis Tolentino. Ang inyong maririnig na ingay ay hudyat na pagisimula ng Metro Y-Shake 3. Ito po si Tivox Director Renato Sundum. Sa drill scenario pong ito, gumalaw na po ang West Valley po. Ito po ay isang edisyo lamang. Ang kooperasyon ng bawat music. isa ay mahalaga. Oh God. Put that down for you. נשמעות השריקות של שיגורי הרקטות באוויר והאזור הופך ליעד מטווח של ירי בלתי פוסק. הנפגעים הם תושבי רהט, נהגי מוניות שמסיעים ומלווים פצועים פלסטינים ממעבר ארז לבטל... in Taiwan, I think this was. Okay, speeding up. actual siren now this siren it, it just sounds like the beginning of, of like Beethoven symphony or something like French horns to sing with headphones on. Argentina. La cadena nacional de radio y televisión de todo el país y el servicio internacional RAE, Radiodifusión Argentina al Exterior. Querido pueblo argentino, voy a compartir con ustedes información importante sobre el coronavirus. Ayer la Organización Mundial de la Salud declaró al brote del nuevo coronavirus como una pandemia, luego de que el número de personas infectadas a nivel global superara las 118.000. All right, so that's the end of that video. Now, I'm going to move on to a different subject. This one is going to be more about, it's still like old technology on TV that makes you feel uncomfortable. Now this one actually has a weird story behind it. Let me get it up so we have some visuals while I'm explaining this. Mm -hmm. Come on. Thank you, Sachi. All right, uh, so this is from, I don't remember the exact year, but this is from like a, a local access kind of thing, what looks like early 90s or something like that in Mexico. And from what I could gather on the internet that this service or this, uh, this particular channel normally plays children's shows. So there'll be kids watching this and people who grew up with this channel available remember as a kid just watching kids shows and then it gets interrupted with this sort of broadcast which is a missing person report so it's a sudden very harsh change of tone to go from kids shows to these people's lives are in danger and they're missing and the voice uh, in Spanish like describes their name and their age and how long they've been missing and stuff like that so it's just it, it scared people as a kid. 
and uh, this video is called uh, Eline Delgado Lopez because for some reason that woman in particular has become the face of this whole uh, spooky childhood memory and there is a creepy pasta thing that kind of spawned out of this and I'm showing you the original unedited video because I personally find this more unsettling than the creepy pasta version which comes up first when you search Celine Delgado Lopez because it adds like a jump scare to it which is a creepy jump scare but this is the original version that you won't be jump scared with just imagine you're watching kids cartoon and you're like 10 years old and then this cuts in and I'll fast forward through some of this uh, to skip to a certain point so you'll see Esteban Mendoza Juárez, de 24 años, se ignora su paradero desde el 29 de abril. Va en compañía del menor Víctor Daniel Mendoza Rodríguez. Cristian Vélez Zamudio. Va en compañía de los menores Erika Cecilia y Cristian Daniel Vélez Ávila. Cualquier informe a los teléfonos de Canal 5. Selene Delgado López, de 18 she años, se el 22 de abril en la delegación Álvaro Obregón. Pamela Martínez Moreno, de 14 años, desapareció el 15 de mayo en la unidad del Rosario. Salvador Uribe Herrera, de 82 años, ausente desde el 16 de mayo, él salió de la colonia Tlalpan. Yadira Villanueva Ojeda, de 23 años, se extravió el 5 de mayo en la colonia Lomas Estrella. Cinco de mayo. Miguel Ángel Guzmán Cortés, de 16 años, se extravió el 15 de mayo. Um, so one thing to note about the whole Celine Delgado López thing is that there was a like I say in the creepypasta thing, and part of that was that someone found a woman with the same name on Facebook, and the whole creepypasta was like, uh, uh, you should visit this woman's account, she is not your friend, they would say, because around the time Facebook added the feature where you could not allow people to even request to be a friend, so people would say, when you look at her account, she's somehow already your friend. And they would say, she's not your friend. Block her immediately. So it was like this viral thing that I guess went around like Spanish-speaking Mexican internet or something like that to tell people to block this woman immediately. And it'd be like, no explanation. So it's kind of unfortunate for this woman. But yeah, that, that's all the additional reading. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. And some of these pictures, part of the, the creepiness of this, I mean, it's creepy because these are actual missing people and we don't really know like what happened to these people to this day but the picture quality just gets so bad that there's some really scary looking um, images on here that if I was a kid watching this would just be mildly traumatizing yes so I'm gonna skip ahead to some of those in the colonia San Felipe Terremotes Yolanda Sánchez Flores, de 27 años, en la de Colonia Mundial. Fue de de 24 años, del año 1996, en Tehuacán, Puebla. Marta Patricia Domínguez García, de 12 años, se extravió el 29 de octubre en la Colonia Campestre, Guadalupán. José Antonio Telles Fernández, de 36 años, se ignora su paradero desde el 18 de marzo de 1999. Cualquier información, favor de comunicarse a los teléfonos de Canal 5. XHGC. So, that was just a little bit of creepy internet stuff that I found interesting. Oops. Accidentally took a picture of myself. Um, so, the next one, this is a really well known thing, but I think it kind of fits into this category of just talking about just kind of creepy old TV stuff and um, you see how long this video is going All right, I'm almost at an hour now interesting you know like I said you didn't listen to me in the intro that I'm just really treating this like a stream we're just like an IRL stream except in VR chat so I'm not gonna edit this down or anything it's gonna be really long and probably nobody's gonna watch all of it but I don't know. I'm enjoying myself, and usually people enjoy other people enjoying themselves, so let's see how it goes. But anyway, 
this next video is uh, pretty well known. This was known as uh, one of the only hijackings of of like what's the term uh, of like a mainstream news network, and which is like a notoriously difficult thing to do. So it was always talked about that when this person hijacked live TV that he must have had some sort of like inside connections or something that would explain how he even got access to any of this. And it's, the hijacking itself is very unsettling, especially if you don't know who the character is, which is uh, Max Headroom, which is this like artificial uh, TV host. It was like a kind of comedy that was way ahead of its time, kind of making fun of um, corporations and things like that and like anchor people. But this guy just had like kind of like a really cheap mask he's putting on, and this version of the video is cut down a little bit. Uh, and I wanted to find a version that didn't have subtitles or anything, so we'd be seeing it here exactly how people would have seen it when it was happening. Because there's a ton of re-uploads of this video, and it's hard to find a good one. So this is the best one I could find. And it's a little creepier to me when you don't know exactly what the guy's saying. If you want to know more about this, just look at uh, Max Headroom Hijacking on YouTube and you'll find a lot of videos explaining all of this. And I think they even figured out who the guy is finally, too. Let's see. So here's how it would have appeared to someone just watching TV at the time. Just being safe. And that's just the rest of the program uh, that it interrupted there. Uh, there's a YouTuber named Wang, W-H-A-N-G, that covers the subject of the hijacking that has a good video on us. You should check him out. All right, so now for the last few videos I'm gonna show here, we're gonna be diving into some fiction these are some of my favorite spooky things that have taken advantage of the nostalgia for like local access kind of old analog TV sort of business like this. 
and created their own stories within it. And this first one is called, this is a little newer one, I think it's just from this year, called Blue Channel. And this has become one of my new favorites. Uh, I'm just going to play the whole thing out. This video already has a huge amount of views. So my puny little channel playing this in its entirety, I don't think anyone's going to care. So um, it has some disturbing imagery in it. I mean, it's all just illustrated, not real. But uh, if you are disturbed by some grotesque, I don't even want to spoil it. I'll just play it. Oh, and it's by someone named Gooseworks. Come on, be that. Oh, I had to check. I thought I... God, it is really creepy. Sitting here in VR by myself. Because this world is already pretty unsettling. But it's, um... I thought I was hearing a voice. Like I was someone else's microphone talking somewhere. As if someone joined this world. And I have my back here. Sorry, I'm in an awkward pose. Click, click, click. So I have my back to where if someone joined this world, they would appear over there. So if I'm sitting here, close to the screen, watching creepy stuff, and someone joined this world, I would... I would shit every pants. But I just checked, and this is an invite-only world, and I'm set to Do Not Disturb. So it shouldn't happen, but oh my god, if it did, I would shit all of them. You can go back. All right. Anyway. or a loved one are suffering from any of the following symptoms lack of feeling emotional outbursts fog of the mind or memory loss this may be a sign of onset AED or advanced emotional deterioration today seven in ten people over the age of 21 report experiencing emotional degradation severe enough to hinder everyday tasks such as workplace performance social interaction and general well-being emotional stability is required for a functional and healthy mind correcting AED used to require rigorous testing and invasive procedures costing time effort and money today the solution is Thalassin using our modern understanding of brain mapping Thalassin is able to reproduce the emotions necessary for any occasion not only does Thalassin restore lost emotion but patients have reported emotions at a higher and more consistent quality than ones produced non-chemically. Included in every pack of thalassin are these common emotions. Happiness, sadness, anger, fear, and relief. Also, look out for over-the-counter options such as jealousy, hope, frustration, and pride. Tired of only experiencing natural emotions? Or maybe interested in expanding your emotional palette? Cutting-edge brain mapping technology has not only allowed us to refine existing emotions, but has also allowed for the creation of new emotions and emotional experiences. With Thalassin Plus, experience emotions beyond previous natural capabilities. These new emotions include degrance, humber, mage, dorselessness, 
Hendrick. They're, they're in the Harnish. Hard to Trampedness. Toulouse. Brick. To experience the power of Thalassin, call the number on your screen now before supplies run out. Order some of them. Mm. Don't know what to say, but I like it. Now, next video is from a channel that I'm sure at this point everyone has at least heard of called Local 58. I'm going to play a couple videos from that channel. Ones that apply to what we've been talking about. First one was actually the first upload from the channel. Uh, if you don't know, Local 58 is a uh, a YouTube channel that started doing this sort of creepy local access thing long before a lot of the other like copycats kind of came out and did this all so I like to think that a lot of people are imitating local 58 style this first one doesn't touch very closely on some of the things that local 58 would go on to be known for this is their first video but I like their first one quite a bit just because of the scenario that it presents which is I'll let it speak for itself, and then at the end, uh, there's actually a real-world situation that happened that kind of applies to this. So I'll just I'll let this sit on its own. Proceed to the highlighted route. Continue on Holbrook Park Drive, then in 500 feet turn right onto North 38th Street. You will arrive at your destination in 2 hours and 28 minutes. Turn right onto North 38th Street. In a quarter mile. Turn left onto Merritt Parkway. You are on the fastest available route. Turn left onto Merritt Parkway, then take the on ramp to Highway 114 North. Traffic ahead, rerouting. In 10 miles, take exit 17, then turn right onto Quarry Utility Road South. You are on the fastest route. In 2.8 miles, keep right to stay on service causeway H516. You will arrive at your destination in 14 minutes. Rerouting. Make a U-turn. Head east for one quarter of a mile, then follow signs for do not enter. Continue on unnamed road, then, in 300 feet, turn off your headlights.
Rerouting. Make a U-turn. Your destination is behind you. Rerouting. In 500 feet. Your destination will be on in 300 feet. Your destination in 250 feet. Rerouting. Your destination will be in 50 feet. You will arrive at your destination. like this one so much. I especially like how this one ends with saying you have arrived. And this video is worth watching more than one time because there's a lot of just really subtle things that the voice is saying that I think is especially eerie. I mean obviously this is like a GPS guidance system that's telling this person where to go and they're just mindlessly following it. Um, but like in the beginning she was saying um, uh, what was it like? 50 feet until do not enter. Uh, now entering unknown road. Our, now arriving at your destination. Please turn headlights off. Things like that. And then as he's uh, being chased at the end, that whole idea of like your destination is coming to find you. Saying, you know, 50 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 10, it's like it was getting closer and closer and then it has arrived. I thought it was a really nice touch. But there was a real world situation kind of like this. Obviously not as extreme. But it was where it was like Apple Maps or something like that had uh, told a whole bunch of people to take a detour on a road that no longer exists. Or at least the road had been completely dug out. And it was just a big hole in the ground. So there was videos online showing that like 10 people had gotten their cars stuck in this hole because they were just following where their like GPS map was telling them to go uh, like street by street to the point where they just drove straight into a hole. Now it just makes me think that like in the future that you could just imagine that this would be a method that aliens or someone could use to manipulate people and to control them and to lure them places where they want them to go. And I'm sure some at some point hackers or someone are going to figure out how to mess with stuff. Like imagine like self-driving cars. In this case it's just a person that's just choosing to follow the directions. But imagine in the future when we'll probably have a lot more self-driving cars around where like the car itself will just be overridden by some force out there and will take you to wherever it wants you to go and you're at its complete mercy imagine that kind of scenario now the next video is another local 58 this is uh, one that has a lot more to do with what we are looking at earlier this is um, weather related I just have like three more videos to go, including this uh, next one. I believe this one is just called Weather Report. Kind of speaks for itself. I love it. This was the first video of Local 58s that I saw and got me hooked. And by the way, all of Local 58's videos are actually interlinked in terms of story. And there's, uh, I think Nexpo did a video um, trying to piece together all the videos and to tell this underlying story. I really like this approach to horror. It gets a little dumb in the end, but I love how this one starts.
that a lot. Now, I, I think I think in next Poe's video, I tried to explain that this was uh, two different parties trying to battle over control of the emergency alert system, as you can see, and they're like making changes in real time. I think it is kind of a creepy prospect. And I swear to God, so unnerving sitting in this world in VR by myself. And no, I'm not setting up a jump scare on people watching this right now or anything. I hate jump scares. I do them to anyone. But because um, if you didn't notice that uh, the screens here, and in a lot of VR chat, that they take like the average light, or they do something where they calculate what's on the screen, and then that light is emitted into the room. So, like if I keep if I let this loop again, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's um maybe if I change to this view, I'm hunched over like a gremlin, and then as some like oh geez, as some like mysterious figure just like walks into the kitchen and makes me shit that. Yeah, so now that the ground is changing light according to what's on the screen. So when it goes black, it becomes completely black in here. And in VR, it's kind of a weird thing where it's like you don't ever have complete darkness. Even if there's like the slightest amount of light, you can still sense depth in VR. And it's very eerie when the room is completely dark. Yet when I look into the room, I can swear that I see some sort of figure that is there because of my ability to see depth in VR. It's, I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's kind of like virtual phantoms or something like that. And I know in one of my streams or somewhere I was talking about all my weird experiences with VR. Like maybe I should put that into its own video or something. That would be kind of an interesting subject for me to just talk about weird things I've had happen in VR. Not just weird like, oh, I saw this world in VR chat that was so messed up or something like that. Like weird as in like psychological things that happened. Um, unconventional uses of the technology to experience, uh, to accidentally experience things that actually made me uncomfortable. I don't know. I'll save that for another video sometime because I have a lot of stories. Anyway, so I like how Local 58 has this whole thing going on about the moon and about, I guess it could be considered cosmic horror, that phrase people love to use all the time these days. Cosmic horror is horror that comes from events beyond our world. Things that are completely out of our control, out of our understanding. They're happening beyond Earth. And so with the emergency alert system and everything, alerting people to all these things happening, um, it reminded me of this real world thing that happened. Let me get it set up so I'm not stalling here. So a few years ago, specifically 2018, New York, I think in Manhattan, had this weird electrical problem that caused one of the like coolest and just freakiest things to happen out of nowhere. I feel like a lot of people forgot that this happened. I mean, it's all explainable by science what happened, but the imagery that came out of it is just so striking. And to see how people reacted to it and all the videos that came from it. All right, this is actual um, video from like a sky camera or something on top of a building looking over New York. I think that's like the Chrysler building or something that's there on the right. So some kind of giant electrical transformer thing, I don't know enough about electricity, had some giant arcing blue light 
that was just shooting out from it and it was at night and it completely illuminated the whole city and just for a moment everyone was just perplexed like people are just coming out of their homes just filming like what's going on the whole sky is just glowing flickering blue so we're first going to look at how it looked from the sky and then i have one of my favorite videos from the ground that really sets the mood and how people felt while this was occurring um, so here's the duration of it happening. There's no audio of this. Like, look at this. Looks like something straight out of a movie. I wonder if I can get a better view for you. Uh, slightly better. And when I see these videos, it just makes me think that, like, if we had an alien invasion or something as as seen from a sci-fi movie like they had some big arrival like this is what it would look like like this isn't special effects this is an unimaginably bright light causing the entire sky to illuminate and i just like to think Kind of like fake myself out for a bit and think that and some kind of alien encounter actually did happen and we're looking at the video of it here makes me hopeful so eventually speed it up a little bit should stop in a second. How bright it got for a while. Come on. There it goes. And it's gone. And everything's back to normal. Now, this other video is from the ground with a crowd of people trying to figure out what's going on. And just trying to imagine how you would feel being in this kind of situation having no idea what's going on. All that you know is that it's at night, you just walk out on the sidewalk and the whole sky is just flickering blue like this. I swear to God. Isn't the most efficient way to do things. Now, this is one of the only like raw videos of this incident I could find because to me seeing the unedited video just on the ground like this has a much more of an emotional impact than all the other videos that are just like news anchors trying to uh, make it overly dramatic so I really glad the, this guy uploaded this video just straight to YouTube and it just handed off to a news report. Okay guys, I don't know what is going on but the entire sky is green and it is flashing.
something bad's going on. What's going on? I have no idea. It looks like a tornado or something that's coming. And my power just flickered. Looks like the end of the world or something. Where you at? What is going on? This is some of the freakiest weather I've seen in my life. That side of the sky is all black. Skies changing colors. I mean, I've seen the sky. I've seen the sky change colors like right before a tornado or something. This is freaky. I turn black. What just happened, everyone? I have no idea. Somebody opened the light beams or something. what it is, what that was, but that's some of the scariest weather I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I just, I really wish I could have been there to experience that. It wasn't that long either, it was just like 10 minutes or something until they uh, shut down power to whatever the thing was. There's another video online of people right next to it. Like, it looked extremely dangerous, and people are just, wa like, standing around looking directly at the light. Like, I feel like once light gets to be blue like that, as it's getting wider and wider, it's probably going to, like, burn your eyes out. So I wouldn't want to be looking directly at that. Kind of like a welding torch light. I don't know. But people are people. Um, I do have a couple other videos that I had on hand here, but this video is already about an hour and a half. So I think this would be a good place for me to end this video. Okay, let me do... Okay, I, I still gotta figure out how to do all this. Go selfie. Wait, no, that's not selfie. Oh no. The selfie. Huh? Yeah, I think this is weird. I just turn it around. Oh, there. Okay. 
Um, actually, this is a chance to kind of show people how the really immersive lighting works or how it looks. Let me repeat the video. I'll turn the volume down a little. Okay guys, I don't know what is going on, but the entire sky is green and it is flashing. You can see how it just like lights up this whole room. It makes it really immersive if Something you're just sitting. Bad's going on. Okay, I need to put this lower. If you're just sitting around with people watching a movie, this is a really good world for this kind of thing. There's a lot of broken features of the video player that I don't like. And it's kind of like, and it has like this little iPad screen here where you can be in another room in this house and uh, you can carry this with you. But what's kind of dumb though is that the way that this is situated that someone sitting over here is going to have half the screen cut off for them. I wish this space was designed a little better for accommodating more people. What is going on? This is some of the freakiest weather I've seen in my life. And it's such a nostalgic image when you see this. Completely dark room with a TV, a blue TV light illuminating the whole space like that. Lots of horror games and stuff have taken advantage of that and uh, used it, but it's just that kind of image is, is really striking to me. Let me pause this. Um, and yeah, and that is definitely made me feel uncomfortable throughout a lot of this. It's just that light. And there's no other lights in a room except for that one light in the kitchen like that. Just waiting to see that long shadow. What if I set the camera up here? This. I'm not in full body right now, but I'd need to be in order for maximum effect. Just shut this off. VR chat, why? Why did you have to ruin it? Okay, just a second. It disconnected me. And now my frame rate is extremely low. Right.
So anyway. Um let me turn this thing on. Oh, you can actually see me holding the camera. Interesting. Alright, well, uh, yeah, I'm not going to edit any of this video. It's going to be lazy. Just upload it exactly how it is with all the pauses and VR chat crashes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so in the future, I'd like to do some streams where it's just chat and I sitting down, watching stuff on the screen. Chat can recommend things. It's just the equivalent of just playing YouTube videos on stream, but at least in VR chat, feels a little more IRL, I guess. And I like IRL streams. Feels a little more like we're just hanging out. Maybe invite people to be here at the same time as doing stuff, maybe. A lot of different possibilities. And I'd also like to uh, just go to different spooky worlds that are out there and kind of maybe do a stream or a video, I don't know, exploring spooky places in VR chat. Because there's a lot of different takes on spooky. I'm not a fan of the big jump scare, haunted house kind of things, but there's a lot, there's a lot of worlds out there that just have really good mood to them that I'd like to explore as well. So thank you if you watched this. Hope you enjoyed this weird mashup of I don't know what this is. Stay tuned. I hope to do some streams in the near future. I'm also working on some other stuff. I'm making my own avatar that I'd like to or a different avatar other than this one that I made from scratch. I made a lot of progress on. It's kind of a robot oriented one. Probably going to show that off sometime soon. Uh, you can always follow me on Twitter or whatever. I post bad stuff all the time. That's what people go to Twitter for, right? And I have a Discord and things like that as well. Alright. Hope you have a good night. I'll see you all later.